In this video, we will summarize four ways in which one can build lists in Common Lisp. Let's try to build this list. Our goal is that the Lisp interpreter doesn't return its value, but the list itself. If I just write it on the REPL and uh, hit enter, we can see that the Lisp interpreter returns the evaluation of the list, but this is not what I want. The first solution is to use the quote form or uh, the single quote mark. It is put in front of the list and it prevents the evaluation of everything that is inside this list. The single quote mark is a shortening for the quote form. This is equivalent to this. Everything that is inside the quote is not evaluated, and so the Lisp interpreter returns it as it is. Now, suppose that the number 3 is not fixed, but is a variable. For example, we can build a function that takes a number and returns the previous expression, replacing the 3 with an x, and we quote it. We can see that the compiler already warned us that the variable x is not used. To understand what happens, let's try to run it. We can see that uh, the quote operator also quoted the value of x and returns the symbol, but I wanted the x to be evaluated to its value. When defining this function, we cannot use the quote operator directly. One alternative is to build the list from its definition using cons. So we want a function that takes a parameter and return a list whose first element is the plus symbol. In this case I have to quote the symbol plus, otherwise it would try to evaluate it. And the rest is another cons. whose first element is another list. Now we can end this list and we return to the previous one and there is also a one and then it also ends. Let's run it this time. We can see that this is exactly what we wanted. The problem is that uh, using cons it's really verbose. Another alternative is to use the list function. In this case all the argument gets evaluated and then it returns a list with their value. In this case we can use define another expression and we make it return a list whose first element is the plus, then there will be another list, and finally the one. In the list of the products we have to call the list function again. We cannot write it directly like this, because it would try to evaluate this list. To prevent this, we use again the function list. Again, this is the wanted value. Finally, we can use the backtick operator, which is the most common way of building lists in which we want to evaluate only specific forms. When we use it alone, it works like a quote operator. But we can use the comma 
to evaluate some specific forms. For example, in this list, I want everything to be quoted but the x, and so I put a comma in front of it. Again, this is exactly the result we wanted to obtain. Now, let's change a little bit the exercise and inside the product we don't want to have just one variable but all the parameters that we pass to our function. With the backtick operator it is really simple. Lisp provides us a way to group all elements that are passed to a function inside a list. Using the rest keyword and then we can give it a name. We start by writing the list as we did before with the backtick operator. Now inside the list we can use the comma at operator and basically it removes the parentheses of the list that we write immediately after. In this case it is the list that contains all the argument passed to our function and so we basically have all the parameter passed to this product. Let's try to run it. We can see that it expanded all the arguments to the product. In the example we discussed, the backtick is probably the best solution. But all of the previous methods have their own application. The cons, which was the most verbose approach, is also useful for some specific application. For example, if we want to expand a list, adding an element in front of it, it's really simple using a cons. Or if we want to work with dotted pairs. If you don't know what a dotted pair is, I suggest you to go and look at my video on what are lists.